what what is is natural. Uh, so when we find ourselves in the midst of a people uh, who do not live according to the laws um, of our Creator, we find ourselves being governed by a government that does not adhere to the commands of the Most High. And so being here, we can speak from our experience, but here's the truth. Um, this, this experience is, is not unique to us. Um, we, in America, are not the only scattered sheep. We're not the only scattered sheep. Um, Israel wasn't just sent to America, even though some people might have you want to believe that. Uh, America was not the only place that received um, the seed of Israel. And with that understanding, um, what I really want to look at is uh, we, we, we are here, right? Everybody can pretty much agree with that. We, we, we're here. I mean, I see y'all. Y'all see me. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So, so the question that I have is, um, what do we do? What do we do? Um, so while we wait, while we wait, because we're in a place where um, it's not necessarily created for us. As a matter of fact, in a lot of cases, things are created specifically with us in mind to our detriment. Yes, say it. Specifically, like it's not an accident. Mm -hmm. Like it's somebody sat down and said, how do we do X? Mm -hmm. Recognize that. What happened when the children of Israel began to grow and and um, grow in strength and in numbers and in, uh, in, in Mitzrayim. What, what did that Pharaoh who rose up who didn't know Yosef say? What did he say? He said, you know what? Let us act presumptively. Let us act, let us be, be uh, uh, my, my dad made me do a whole report on this when I was young. young. Take an initiative. Let us take initiative. Let us not wait. He says, because they are numerous and they may join with our enemies and come against us. They are growing strong. So he says, let us act wisely. Let us act wisely against them. And so this is what's happening. This is what we see. You know, there's a there's a lady, um, and and um, everybody would recognize this, but her name is Margaret Singer, and um, she she had a goal in mind, and that goal was how do we limit the population of the black folks that are here? How do we do that? And she came up with a plan. That plan is called Planned Parenthood. Come on now. So more deaths by way of abortion have taken place within our community than any disease, any transatlantic slave trade, anything else. That is the number one killer. And so things that are being done against us, we've got to figure out how to combat. Um, but there's also this balance between, guess what? We're here. Y'all, we're here. Is there, I mean, I asked that question earlier. Is there anybody else that's not here? All y'all here, right? Okay. I'm here too. <laughs> I see you, you see me. <laughs> we here. So, the thing is this. We talk a lot about um, the getting here. We talk about... Um, I don't know what I done did to this thing. Like I done did something. So we talk a lot about getting here. We also talk a lot about leaving here. What about being here? 
What about being here? And so let's look a little bit into the first part of the process. And I did something wrong in the slideshow because I was trying to be fancy. So y'all see how the screen is moving and stuff? That's supposed to keep happening. And you're supposed to see my words too. So apparently I'm gonna have to keep going forward and coming back until I, uh... okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So let's examine getting here. Let's examine getting here. So we're, we're, um, I'm gonna try to uh, not to go, and this is not because I want to uh, cheat anything or take any shortcuts. It's just in the in the um, in the understanding of time and wanting to make sure that I get the message across. Everybody here should be at the point where you understand that we like to read chapters at a time. So, but when I do my teachings, I try not to read an entire chapter. But please do understand there's always context that you have to consider. Um, but I'm just gonna show and examine how we got here. Why are we here? Why are we here? Um, so let's look at Ezekiel 39 again. We're gonna skip around just a little bit to you know um, Again, just just specifically for the sake of time um, And and in looking at one thing at a time. So we're just looking at how we got here. So let's go to Ezekiel 39 uh, verse 23 and 24 Chapter 39 verse 23 and 24 and this in this chapter is is definitely um, prophetic, um, as in uh, still, still something to be fulfilled. Uh, it speaks of Gog and Magog. It speaks of um, the war that is made against Magog and the fire that Yah is going to rain down. So um, we know that a lot of this has not happened yet. Uh, so I want to look at verse 23 and 20, uh, verses 23 and 24, and it says. And the nations shall know that the house of Israel went into exile for their what? Crookedness. That's iniquity. That is changing laws. That's manipulating. Right? That's manipulation. Because they have trespassed against me, so that I hid my face from them, and I gave them into the hand of their enemies or their adversaries. And they all fell by the sword, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions. Transgressing is to break or go beyond, to transgress the law. I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. What does that remind me of? What does the scripture say about what separates us from the most high? Sin it says your sins, your sins has separated you from me. That's what Yahweh says. And so let's 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 now uh, again look at a couple of other examples. Uh, so so far we can say that it was definitely because of trespass, right? It was because of crookedness or iniquity, correct? All of this being things that come from going against Yahweh's laws, that which he has commanded. All right, so let's go to Devarim. Devarim or Deuteronomy, and we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're all very familiar with that. Again, not going to go through everything in there, um, but we're going to pick out just about uh, four verses. So I want to start with the foundational verse for this, um, this uh, pivot in the chapter. So we know that at the beginning it gives you a condition by saying, if you obey my commands, then I. And then we're at the, the pivot that takes place at uh, verse 15. So I want to first read that because we need to get an understanding again of why are we here? How did we get here? Um, and this is, this is part of that reasoning. So verse 15 says, And it shall be, if you do not obey, 
if you do not obey. Right. If you do not obey. Conditional. If you do not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to do what? Amen. To guard all his commands and his laws, which I command you today, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Right. Let's go down to verse 32 because this is part of what will overtake you. Verse 32, your sons and your daughters, that's us, yeah. are given to another people and your eyes look and fail for them all day long and your hands powerless. Y'all, they have, it's, it's written in history. That's right. Where the, 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 the slaves come aboard, either in coming aboard the ship or in arriving in the port, that their children, if they've given birth, even on the ship, that their children are snatched from their arms as, as you would say, I'm going to the store and I'm going to purchase this and this and I don't necessarily need that. And so to, to, to take and say, you know, I have need of two additional male servants, not paying attention to the fact that that male servant has a wife and has children, or one that comes and says, I have need of a child, and they just take that child as if that child is just merely goods. This is what we saw happen. This is what we saw happen. But what was in 15? Why is it happening? If you, if you disobey, if you do not do all that I'm commanding you this day, then these curses shall, they're going to find you. They're going to hunt you down. That's right. They're going to overtake you. That's right. And that's what we saw happen. Let's go to verse 64. Verse 64 says, And Yahweh shall scatter you among all peoples. How many peoples? All. all peoples. From one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods, other mighty ones, which neither you nor your fathers have known would and stone. This is what's happening as a result of disobedience. Verse 68. And Yahweh shall bring you back to Mitzrayim in ships by a way of which I said to you, you are never to see again. And there you shall be sold to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one to redeem you. Yeah. No one to redeem you. It means what it's saying when it says no one to buy you because we know that obviously they were bought and sold. But what it's saying is there was no kinsman redeemer mm -hmm. that would come in and say the seven years are over. I clear out their debt. Whatever they owe, it should be done. If it's not, I redeem them with no kinsman redeemer. Let's look at Hosea. Let's look at Hosea. <clears throat> We're going to look at Hosea 4. And we know that in, in Deuteronomy, that was speaking to the entire house of, of Israel. Um, Hosea is a little bit more specific to the northern tribes of Israel. But again, what I really want to focus in on is some basic concepts. Um, and so some of what we're going to talk about may not be specific, but we want to we want to be able to learn a lesson uh, from what's happening. So Hosea chapter four, let's look at verse one first. And it says, hear the word of Yahweh, you, you, <clears throat> you children of Israel. For Yahweh has a case against the inhabitants of the land. For there is no truth or loving commitment or knowledge of Elohim in the land. And he goes on to describe all the breaking of Torah that's happening. Let's look at verse 6. 
6. Verse 6 says, My people have perished for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being priests for me. Since you have forgotten what? You have forgotten the Torah of your Elohim. I also forget who? Your children. Your children. Verse 7 says, And as they were increased, so they sinned against me. My esteem they have changed into shame. My esteem they have changed into shame. And so what you have here, this is how we got here. Obviously, there are many, 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 many more examples that we can go through. I just want to want to show the point of looking at how we got here. And so <clears throat> let's now look at the other piece of leaving here. Let's look at leaving here. So we're going to backtrack just a little bit. Go back to Ezekiel. We looked at what got us here. How did we get in this place? Let's look at the process of leaving. What will happen? So start at verse 25 this time in chapter 39. Look at verse 25 and we'll read uh, down to the end of the chapter. It's just what, four or five verses there. So uh, chapter 39, verse 25, and it says, Therefore, thus said the master Yahweh, Now I am going to bring back the captives of Yaakov, and I shall have compassion on all the house of Israel, and shall be jealous for my set-apart name. And they shall have borne their shame, and all their trespass they committed against me when they dwell safely in their own land. In whose land? Their, their own. own land. With none to make them afraid. That was part of the curse, remember? Remember it was, you know, you said you'd be in the daytime, oh, that it were right. night. And in the nighttime, oh, that it were day. And, and, and everything, it says that you would be trembling and in fear of all things. Uh, verse 27. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of the lands of their enemies, and I shall be set apart in them before the eyes of many nations. This is the bringing back. This is the gathering. This is where he says, I will take you from everywhere. I'm going to stop because we're going to read some of that. Verse 28. And they shall know that I am Yahweh the Elohim who sent them into exile among the nations and then gathered and then gathered them yes. back to their own land yes. and left none of them behind. How many did he leave behind? None. none. And no longer do I hide my face from them for I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel declares the master Yahweh. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all something. Some people think that that's, that's uh only time the spirit is getting poured out is when you jumping and shouting and, and, and speaking in tongues. That's it. But this, this is speaking of something a little extra here. And the house of Israel is where this pouring out will take place. The house of Israel. Uh, and, and, and not to go too far off task, but in Acts, what did it say? Who were there? In Acts 2, it says devout men from where? from all nations of Judea. That's right. All just said Jews or Yehudim, yeah. devout Yehudim from every nation. Right. They were Yehudim, yet they were from every nation. Uh -huh. Let's go to Yeshayahu, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Speaking more toward that southern tribe, um, as we just went through with uh, Ezekiel, let's look at, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Wait a minute. We already did that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Isaiah, I think I just left a, I left the Devarim in there by accident. 
um, Yeshayahu 14.1. Because Yahweh has compassion on Yaakov and shall again choose Israel and give them rest in their what? Own, Own land. land. And the strangers shall join them. And the strangers shall join them. Mm -hmm. That just kills replacement theology. Yes, it is. The church has placed right. replaced Israel, like 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 I've heard many say, the church is spiritual Israel. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ain't what the books say, but no, okay. It and it says, and the strangers shall join them, and they shall cling to the house of Yaakov. There you go. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Jeremiah. Go back to Yermiyahu. And let's go to chapter 23. And in that chapter, we're going to look at verse 8, 23 and 8. And it says, but as Yahweh lives, who brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the land of the north and from the lands where I had driven them, and they shall dwell where? On their own soil. On their own soil. So this is the leaving. This is him. We're going, I just showed you just from one extreme. Well, I can't even really say extreme because if we were talking extremes, I'd be talking about going from the point of never um, having broken the covenant. Um, but this is from one point in the journey to another point in the journey. And it only looks at, again, we examined how we got here and we examined how we will be leaving here. And notice that we and our decision is really important in both of those. In both of those, our decisions are extremely important. Right. What we decide we will do, whether we will obey or whether we will disobey, as Deuteronomy says so clearly, if you obey, if you do not obey, verses 1 and verses 15, really lay it out, nice and plain, nice and clear, nice and clear. And so, now let's look at not just not just getting here or leaving here, but let's go and look at the meat of this thing, being here. So while we wait, while we're here, we are here. So go forward in Jeremiah to chapter 29. This is a time. This is a time speaking in Jeremiah 29 to a people in captivity. This is during the Babylonian captivity. And so, again, I want to use this to learn a lesson. This is not speaking specifically prophetically to us. However, what do we read for? To learn. So what I want to do is show you how we can take the example that we saw in Babylon and our forefathers who were taken into captivity in Babylon and we can learn from this process. And so by this point, there's already been some that's been taken. Remember, they were into this big argument with, the, with Yahweh, believe it or not. And it was really obviously through, through um, Jeremiah and, and, and the prophets that were speaking to them. And the, the position that they were taking is, hey, we good, we straight, if you're going to take us, we're going to just go to Mitzrayim. We're just going to go to Egypt and go do our thing over there. And he's like, yep, yeah, you do what you want to do. Wherever you go, you're going to die. So you got two choices. You can go there and die. Or you can go ahead and go into this captivity for this 70-year period. And when I am prepared, 
I will bring you out. <laughs> and so this was the message that Yahweh sent through Yahoo to his people and about what they should do while they wait. And so verse 4 through 9, let's look at that. Chapter 29, verse 4 through 9, and it says, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, to all the exiles whom I exiled from Yerushalayim to Babel, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, Take wives and bring forth sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, and let them bear sons and daughters, and be increased there and not diminished, and seek the peace of the city where I have exiled you, and pray to Yahweh for it, for in its peace you have peace. For thus said Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, neither listen to the dreams which you are dreaming, for they are prophesying falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares Yahweh. That's what I was talking about. They were saying, hey, we're good. We're okay. We don't know what you're talking about. What you think is so bad, but we got it made. Right. <laughs> and he's telling them, listen to me, listen to them if you want to. I'm telling you what's going down. Y'all, we we we're not at the point at which we have to guess whether we're in exile. We know we're in exile. That's right. We know that. And so again, what is Yahweh speaking? He says, build houses, plant vineyards, have children, give and take in marriage, pray for the peace of the city. For as so happens their peace, so, so comes their peace, so comes your peace. And so this is what he's telling them to do while they wait. So we can't lose track. There was something that um, uh, uh, old pastor used to say, um, even though I was young, when, when we were with them, I still remember a lot of what he said. And something that he said was, um, you can't be so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. And so, you so ready, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the leaving part. But we got to figure out what to do while we're here. Because the truth is, there was something that Messiah said that had them all, like, with their bags packed, ready to go any second. He says, this generation will by no means pass away before all be filled. And they like, yo, y'all ready to go? I mean, I'm ready. I, I got everything I need. Let's go. Like, they like ready. So let's look. Let's look. I want to change the order of this. Let's go to Exodus 12 first. Let's go to Exodus 12 first. Um, because again, what are we learning now? We're learning the lesson of while we wait. While we wait. So let's go to Exodus 12 and 1. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 11. And what we all know is this is what? This is the Exodus. This is the Exodus. This is what's happening right here. This is, is them being prepared for what's going to happen, what, what, what they're uh, leaving, their process for leaving is. And so let's look at it. Verse 1 through verse 11. It says, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Mizraim, saying, This new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this new moon, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. 
And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the beings. According to each man's need, you make your count for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old. Take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same new moon. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall slay it between the evenings. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs, and its inward parts. And do not leave of it until morning. And what remains of it until morning, you are to burn it with fire. And this is how you eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Pesach of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now, this right here, that last piece there that we just read, it says, and you shall eat it in haste with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Sounds like a hurry up and wait. Yeah, that's, that's basically what he said, right? Hurry up and wait. What he's saying is be prepared, but don't be anxious. Think about that. Be prepared, but don't be anxious. So before we go deeper into that, let's go through Matthew. Let's go through Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to start at verse 42. We're going to read uh, down through the rest of the chapter there, verse 51, so. Matthew chapter 40, uh, chapter 24, verse 42 through 51. And it reads, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your master is coming. And know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Because of this, be ready to, for the son of Adam is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is a trustworthy and wise servant whom his master set over his household to give them food in season? Blessed is that servant whom his master having come shall find so doing. Yes. Doing what? What he told them to do. Providing food in its season. Hallelujah. Protecting the house. Mm -hmm. Being alert. Being aware during the watches. Mm -hmm. Truly I say to you that he shall set him over all his possessions. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming. Well. Uh, he ain't coming back right uh -huh. now. <laughs> And being and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant shall come on a day when he does not expect it, and at an hour he does not know, and shall cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this being, this, this servant is described in two ways. The good servant is described as doing, while the bad servant is described as wasting, wasting away time. Probably 
trying to predict or probably trying to calculate how much time he has for his revelries before the master returns. Not realizing that, what did Exodus teach us? What did he tell them? How were they to wait? Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. They were to wait ready. Ready to go. Right. So there, there's a balance that we've got to figure out. We can't, here's what we can't do. We can't get our staff, our sandals, and our loins girded and stand at the door and do nothing. That's what we can't do. Because what were they supposed to do even during the preparation for the exodus? They had to get the lamb. They had to slay the lamb. They had to cook the lamb. They had to eat the lamb. So they were doing, right? Doing. They were doing. So when we look at that example, while they're waiting for the, for the, for the great exodus, while they're waiting to be delivered, they're not just waiting. They are prepared, number one. And number two, just as with this good servant, they are doing. They are doing. They're doing. And so if we, if, we, if we look at the lesson that we learn from this Exodus, I even like the way it speaks here when it says that you ought to eat every piece of this lamb. Who's the lamb? The Messiah is the lamb. So what should we be doing while we're waiting? Consuming the Messiah. How does he say it? He says, take my yoke and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we are learning of him. How do we learn of him? Who is he? He is the living word. That's what everybody says. He is the bread. That's what everybody says. He is the light. That's what everybody says. These are all the same attributes that are attributed to the Torah. The Torah is called the bread of life. The Torah is called the light. That's right. The Torah is called the way by which we walk the path of righteousness. That's right. So as we do this, as we learn of him, this is what we do. This is what we do. While we're waiting, we're consuming. We're preparing. And even though we need to make haste, don't be impatient. Even though we should make haste, we cannot be impatient. So think about it like this. He's telling you, and I think I've used this example before. I think I've used this example before. He's saying, as soon as I get back, be ready to go. Period. Don't try to guess when I'm coming so you can hurry up and try to get ready right then. Because what if I decide to come a little early? Or what if you just didn't quite figure it out just right? So now there's something else that I want us to pay attention to while we wait. While we wait. Let's look at Hosea once again. Let's look at Hosea again. <clears throat> So we're preparing, right? While we wait, we're preparing. Also, while we wait, we're consuming. That's what was happening in Exodus. They were prepared by putting their sandals on, girding their, girding their loins, taking upon their staff in their hand, and they were eating the lamb, consuming the lamb. 
there's something else that's happening here because that lamb was being shared if somebody else, man, think about this, y'all. Somebody else didn't have lamb. What were they supposed to do? Share the lamb. If it was too much lamb for one household, what were they to do? Come together, share the lamb. So in consuming the lamb, it wasn't just them, but they were going to someone who didn't have enough lamb to share the lamb. Hosea, Hosea chapter one, verse 11. Hosea chapter, chapter one, verse 11 says, and the children of Yehudah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together and appoint for themselves one head and shall come up out of the earth the great for the great is the day of Yisrael. You know what that word Yisrael means? That word means Yah or El God sows. He sows. So remember, we were scattered. What do you do when you sow seed? Come on. You scatter. That's right. Hallelujah. Why do you sow seed? Mm. To reap a harvest. Why did Israel? Why did Yah sow? To reap a harvest. Let's look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16, because there might be a household that doesn't have enough lamb. And you may have all the lamb that you need and some for your neighbor. And there's some sowing that's happening. Chapter 16, verse 15 and 16 says, but Yahweh lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. For I shall bring them back into their land and uh, into their land I gave to their fathers. See, I am sending for many fishermen, yes. declares Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after that, I shall send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and every hill yeah. and out of the holes of the rocks. And I'm gonna keep yeah. reading. For my eyes are on all their ways. They have not hidden from my face, nor has their crookedness been hidden from my eyes. And so this, this and if you keep reading down, um, you will see. Matter of fact, let's read the last verse. Uh, Therefore, see, I am causing them to know this time. I cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahweh. And so understanding what's happening, he is fishing from everywhere where he sent fish. Should it be the same amount of fish that he sent out? Nope. No. Why is he hunting? Why is he fishing? Why is he gathering? Goes back to the same thing. It's what's happening while you wait. You're not being dormant, standing at the door with your loins girded, your sandals on, and your staff in your hand. But you're growing. What did it say in Jeremiah 29? Or, uh, is it Ezekiel 29? No, Jeremiah. What does it say in Jeremiah 29? It says, build houses. It says, have children. It says, give in marriage. Give your sons to daughters. Your daughters to sons. And pray for the peace of this city. For as their peace comes, so does yours. So there's some doing 
there is some growing, there is some consuming of the lamb. There is seed that has been sown is causing a reproduction. A reproduction. So as we have been sown, as we read in um, Hosea 1 and 11, as we have been sown into the earth, Yahweh is ready to gather. And when he gathers, we've got to be ready. But while we wait, we got to make sure we're consuming lamb. We got to make sure we're prepared for his return, no matter when it is. And we got to make sure that we are growing. It's the only reason to give in marriage is to grow. It's to grow. That's what he said. He says, continue to multiply. Continue to grow. And so that's what we want to do. While we wait, let's consume the lamb. Let's share the lamb. Let's prepare our hearts. Amen. Amen. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles.